Trisha Paytas made a lot of people mad today when she came out as trans, which makes us ask, how can someone be capable of doing something like this? There actually might be a scientific explanation for it. Y'all, 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 if, if you're in a good mood, you're gonna love it. <laughs> Isn't that the fun part though about dating someone with like borderline personality? Like you don't know what mood they're gonna be in. Are they gonna be happy? Are they gonna be mad? What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community and I try to look at them from different angles than other channels are. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you're not yet, follow me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. So many of you know that uh, with each of my videos, granted they get monetized by YouTube, 20% goes to a different charity and I try to tie it in with the topic of the video. So in this video, seeing as how Trisha Paytas is eh, doing her thing, <laughs> we are going to be donating 20% of this video to The Trevor Project, all right? The Trevor Project is an amazing organization that is dedicated to helping LGBTQ teens, all right? So I will also provide a direct donation link down below if you wanna to donate to them directly, but I would appreciate if you shared this video so we could donate a little bit more to The Trevor Project, all right? So, what happened? Um, I'm not going to show a bunch of clips from Trisha Paytas' video, I'm gonna link it down below. But yeah, you heard it right, she came out as trans today, all right? And yeah, I've had a busy day and I was receiving a lot of DMs, a lot of DMs asking me if I was gonna talk about this. And yeah, I hopped on Twitter and I saw Trisha Paytas was t trending and I'm like, all right, like, let's see what's going on. Now, before we jump into what was happening on Twitter, I need you to write down two numbers. I need you to leave two numbers down in the comment section below, all right? I have a question for you about empathy. On a scale of one to 10, how much empathy do you feel that Trisha Paytas has, all right? One being absolutely no empathy, 10 being just extremely empathetic, all right? So scale of one to 10, write that number down, put it in the comments below. But the second number is I want you to tell me how much empathy you have. How much do you feel you have? On a scale of one to 10, how empathetic do you think you are? Again, one is no empathy at all. 10 is you are just the most empathic person on earth. All right, we're gonna come back to those numbers later. But anyways, let's check out some of these tweets. So this first one from B says, just opened YouTube and saw Trisha Paytas say that she identifies as a trans man because she finds gay men attractive. Next tweet says, Trisha Paytas fully said she finds gay guys hot, so that's why she's a transgender gay guy. No effing words, just crickets. The next one says, F Trisha Paytas. If you support her in any way, shape, or form, then block me right now. And even our good buddy, I never chimed in, where he said, Trisha Paytas is the reason I stopped eating McDonald's chicken nuggets. She put a weird vibe on them. Oh, also because I'm slightly overweight, new video tomorrow responding to the kitchen floor crybaby. So then I was curious, I was like, how is Trisha Paytas responding to this? All right, so this first one, this is from her tweet about the video, and it says, this would be more funny if girls weren't being killed for disclosing this fact. Trisha Paytas says, it's not meant to be funny because I don't look like a traditional male on the outside, I'm a joke. Men can wear dresses, heels, and makeup, you know, closed minded and ignorant. Then Vicky Vox actually retweeted this and said that report this tweet using gender identity as clickbait is a privileged act of violence. I'm not gonna stand for it. I don't care what it's actually about. The headline and photo used cannot be serious. Trans people are murdered for quietly trying to live their life. Big nope. Trisha replies, you don't know me, my journey, my struggle, my transition. I've been with a gender identity therapy specialist for the past six months because I hated who I was since I was three. Think before you tweet, this is more harmful than me sharing my story. And her and Vicky Vox had one more back and forth. 
Sharing your story? Nah, you're trying to sell clicks and tickets. Do you. I pray for the most benevolent outcome for your journey. And she says, you're disgusting trash, so harmful because I don't look like a traditional male, I'm a joke. I pray no one judges you the way that you are judging me. I've been hospitalized three times this year. You do not know my struggle. You're a pig and should be deleted off Twitter. So we have to ask ourselves, why? Why would she do this, right? Why does anybody do what they do? This is something that I'm regularly thinking about. And again, like I showed in the intro, she said this in a previous video. Isn't that the fun part though about dating someone with like borderline personality and like, you don't know what mood they're gonna be in. Are they gonna be happy? Are they gonna be mad? So I just finished this amazing book right here by Simon Baron Cohen, The Science of Evil. And yes, if you're wondering, I was curious too when I started this book, Simon Baron Cohen is actually cousins with Sasha Baron Cohen, <laughs> you know, Borat. Yeah, interesting. I was like, oh, maybe they just have the same hyphenated last name. But anyways, excellent book. I will link it down in the description below. But the th biggest thing to note is that Simon, who's been researching this stuff for decades now, he doesn't even really believe in pure evil. The way that he describes it in this book, and he dives into some of the science behind it as well, is empathy, right? having a lot of empathy or a lack of empathy. He actually uses a scale of one to six. But anyways, to explain some forms of lack of empathy, he talks about zero degrees of empathy, and then he talks about zero negative and zero positive. So zero positive, he refers to people who have Asperger's or autism, all right? So although people with Asperger's or autism, they struggle with empathy and reading other people's emotions and things like that. Like there are many, many things that people with autism or Asperger's contribute to the world and they do amazing things. They have a very systematic mind and it's awesome, right? But then he talks about zero negative people who have empathy. And there are a few different categories that fall into this, all right? So he discusses people who have been diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. He talks about psychopaths, sociopaths, as well as people who have been diagnosed diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, all right? And again, Trisha Paytas said this. Isn't that the fun part though about dating someone with like borderline personality? Like you don't know what mood they're gonna be in. Are they gonna be happy? Are they gonna be mad? Now, through Simon Baron Cohen's research, as well as collaborating with other scientists and neurologists and things like that, they discovered that there's actually an empathy circuit, all right, in the brain. So here are the brain regions. So part of the empathy circuit includes the anterior insula, the amygdala, the caudal anterior cingulate cortex, the dorsal slash ventral medial prefrontal cortex, the frontal upper column, inferior frontal gyron, inferior parietal lobule, inferior parietal sulcus, middle cingulate cortex, orbitofrontal cortex, posterior superior temporal sulcus, right temporal parietal junction, and the somatosensory cortex. All right, so what is this talking about? They have done fMRI brain scans for people with different diagnoses, and they see that these various regions of the brain involved in the empathy circuit do not function properly, all right? And this can help us understand the lack of empathy that some people have. Now, like we've shown, Trisha Paytas says she has borderline personality disorder. The question is, how does somebody get borderline personality disorder, all right? So, according to some studies, they say this, 40 to 76% of people with BPD report that they were sexually abused as children, and 25 to 73% report that they were physically abused. So, while there is a good deal of research that links childhood abuse to BPD, there is also evidence that about a third of people with BPD report no abuse. So, if borderline personality disorder is a result of abuse in many cases, all right, and a lack of empathy is the result of borderline personality disorder, 
can we really blame that person? Now that you've answered that question in your mind, I want you to go back to the question that I asked you at the very beginning of this video. On a scale of one to 10, how empathetic do you feel that you are, right? So many of us feel that we're extremely empathetic, but when we learn stories about how people become the way they are, we completely lose empathy for them. And that's something else that's very interesting in this book is about how normal people are able to switch off their empathy all willy nilly, right? Like, wouldn't it make sense that we're empathetic towards people that developed certain mental illnesses because they were abused and things like that? Like when I was working in the treatment center, I met so many people so many people that became addicts and developed different diagnoses because of childhood abuse, right? And then just seeing the stigma that's around them, it's like, yes, yes, what they do sucks. And a lot of it is a lack of empathy, it's cruel. Um, when I was in my active addiction, I was a liar, a cheat, a thief, you know, and all these other things. So here's my question to you, all right? You can answer it in the comments below or you can just answer it in your mind. I just want to get wheels turning, all right? Although there might be a reason that mental illness came to fruition, and we also have to remember that genetics are a component as well, at what point does a person take responsibility for their own healing, right? At what point does a person have to learn and educate themselves about their diagnosis and, you know, get help for it, right? So something that I was taught seven years ago when I got sober was, although there were reasons I became addicted to drugs and alcohol, it was now my responsibility to start changing my life for the better. You know what I mean? So these are just things I want you to take into consideration moving forward when you see these types of stories, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. Don't forget, please share this video. 20% of all the ad revenue is going to The Trevor Project, all right? But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my books, by merch, and all that other stuff. I thank you so, so much. All right, I'll see you next time.